Well, after the last result, I think safety is pretty much a guarantee. So I think we can start planning for the future now. Hello, welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Race to the Top. I'm Ian, and in today's episode we do have, of course, all the build-up to the Singapore GP. I've never actually raced in Singapore before, so this will be quite interesting. Um, we do have a, a few things that we have to um, look at in today's episode. First of all, I want to have a quick look at the pit crew. Um, but also, the, the big thing is Joey Mawson um, had a little whinge about uh, Fuoco and thinks that you know he's too, he's too good, we should get rid of him. So I think we're going to have to have a quick look at drivers. We are going to have to get rid of Fuoco just to keep Mawson on side. But I think we might be able to do the double switch. I'll explain that after doing this. Um, Maui had a bit of a disaster in that race, finishing down in 16th. What's your analysis? Analysis? Analysis. Analysis. Um, they just got unlucky. I think Gustav is an excellent driver and I'm sure his form will pick up. And uh, he's actually got a new personality trait. And he's open to discussing terms with me. Um, I'm not going to go for him, though. Um, yeah, so what I'm thinking of doing is we'll have a quick look. Actually, we might as well have a quick look now and try and um, sign someone. We're going to have to get rid of Fuoco anyway. I don't think he's going to develop into anything. If we have a quick look at him, he's not that great, is he? He's not going to really develop into the sort of driver that we're after, or at least Corinne's after. Um, because compared to, say, Joey Mawson... In fact, let's do a quick comparison of the two, and then you can see um, Joey Mawson's got him completely covered and the fact that Joey Moss is not even the best driver in Formula 2 sort of says that Fuoco is probably not going to be anything more than a backmarker in Formula 3 so I think it probably is time to get rid of him but what I'm sort of thinking of doing is if we have a quick look then at um, some of the drivers available we're going to go for, for someone young and someone that I did see that that popped up um, in fact ignoring all the scouting um, people that are already available is we've got someone if I can ever find his bloody name now I've I looked at it before and I thought there he is and I'm going to remember him and now I can't spot him to save my life. Um, where is he? He's around there. There you go. Daniel Nadj, um, Hungarian. This guy is pretty good. I don't know how much we'll be able to get money for him just uh, in terms of his wage because although his um, stats are pretty good, he's also got this amazing trait which bumps the, all his attributes up by two but only during race uh conditions so he might be someone that we might have to have a quick look at um, because of finances I don't think we need to worry too much about our money anymore because you know whilst you know we're not you know safety is not a guarantee we've got 34 points we've got a 32 point gap over last place campos that's a huge gap and you've got to assume that okay we're probably not going to perform as well as we did in the previous race but you've got to kind of assume that we're still going to be picking up the odd point here and there and i think we're pretty much safe now we're not going to be going for the championship i'll be happy with a mid-table finish so we can sort of afford you know, to spend a bit of money on a driver, even more so because, as we say, we've got a couple of uh, sponsorships coming up. I talked about them uh, briefly in the, the, the couple of episodes ago. Once these three come up, we've got Speed Hunters, Oris, and Sonax. Once they've all gone, um, we're going to get more money anyway, and then we can start even looking at um, having conditions, such as where we finish in the race, where we finish in qualifying, that sort of thing, which might be able to give us a little bit more money. So I'm not too concerned about spending some cash because, obviously, we're, we're not spending a lot of money on Fuoco. He's only costing us £33,000. Uh, Mawson's only costing us £41,000. But what I'm sort of thinking of doing then is actually going for a driver uh, that's going to cost a bit more money, Not perhaps not as much as Leclerc is up to nearly 500000 half a million pounds a race. Um, then bumping Joey Mawson down to the reserve driver role. He won't be too happy about that, but he's not happy anyway. He's never happy, and he, he's going to be replaced at the end of the year anyway. So I was sort of thinking of, let's go have a look at Daniel Nadge, because I think he would be pretty good. And if we can get him in on a decent wage, that wouldn't be too bad either. And then, of course, you've got all these young drivers down here. Um, I might even start sending uh, some scouts out to get some of these guys. So I might just do some of the younger ones. Like you've got Sophia, for instance. These 16-year-olds would all be pretty good, I think, to um, have a look at. Uh, scouting them. We can only do four, um, but that'll do. They're all available, they're all free, they're all unemployed, and they might be um, decent options. So I think let's scout them and see what comes up. But what we will do is we will have a quick look at uh, Nadge. I've just got to find him again now, so I may have to cut this out because it's going to take a while to find him, I'm sure. Um, where are we? I'm not going to find him, am I? Uh, nope. We may have to come back. Where is he? Where is he? Come on, he's around here somewhere. If you can see him, let me know, because I can't see him at all. Uh, there he is. I found him. Daniel Nadge. I might say, I might have a quick look go and see if we can sign this guy, because attribute-wise, he's, he's not terrible. He's certainly, he's certainly an improvement over Mawson. But the fact that he's got this trait will really bump him up, and he could become a much better driver considering the wage that he's on. So that's why I'm sort of thinking, let's have a quick look at him. He's only 19 as well, so he's got a bit of improvement there. 
Um, he will be the number two driver. Um, and what I'm thinking is uh, having him as number two, Leclerc as number one, and then Mawson can bugger off to reserve driver. And at the end of the year, see you later, and we'll bring in someone else. So he is quite keen on a good wage. So I'm sort of thinking 169, something like that. And he does want a good uh, signing fee. So I'm thinking maybe a bit less. Let's go 240. Um, these, this is actually something that I'm really hoping they could, in theory, change in the future, in, in any future versions, is the qualifying bonus and the race bonus. Um, it's very easy to sort of game the, 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 the game, really, you know, to, to, to cheat the game. Because the chances of us finishing second is pretty low. I know that happened in the previous race. But... You can essentially say, well, you know, I'll need to finish first. If you finish first, you get a nice big bonus. The chances of him finishing first is slim to none. So we can sort of give him a huge uh, bonus for, for finishing there. So in a way, you can sort of cheat someone. Uh, you can cheat, you know, an easy signing out of uh, out of the game that way. But Daniel Nadge, you know, he, he's actually not too fussed about it. So we will actually uh, we'll send that contract off and, and see what happens. And we will actually fast forward just so we can start talking about... Um, uh, part conditions and all that sort of stuff, which is pretty, pretty crucial for us uh, in the next couple of races. Uh, Joey's black eye, he's recovered from that, which is a, a promising sign. Because uh, Singapore as well, uh, going back to the um, part condition, uh, gearbox and brakes once more are crucial. Um, and we don't really have anything. Um, if we go to improve parts, I will find the right one eventually. And what I want to do is I want to actually start improving uh, this gearbox because I want to get it up as high as it can go as well as its reliability, because reliability is right down, isn't it? Um, and same with the gear uh, the brakes, rather. The brakes could be improved just a touch as well. Um, I may sort of bump them up, and I may sort of go... Actually, you know what? I'm going to take the reliability off of that one, because we really want this gearbox, because this gearbox is going to be the, the big difference. And I think I might put it 6.4, so the performance has a bit more of a, uh, a, a say, or a bit less of a say than normal, I should say. Um, and whilst we're here, and whilst I think of it, let's have a quick look at the pit crew then, and see how they're going. Mistake percentage is creeping up for quite a lot of them. But a lot of these guys, um, they're actually, their contracts are coming up. They've only got one more race to go. So I'm going to have to bring in a few more guys. Um, for instance, we've got like the front jack guy now. This guy would be pretty good um, for front jack and rear jack. Um, and I think we may have to go for someone like that. And it's like mistake uh chance percentage percentage is very low. I'm struggling with my words during the during this filming. I don't know why. So I might pick up Nam and I might just hire is it a she or a he? I didn't even see. We'll go we'll go re just so we know. Where is it? Where's Nam? It's a she. It's a Korean. There you go. G R Nam. So she can actually slot straight in, I think. And we can give someone like say like Lindman a break. Or even uh Vahala for instance. Uh, maybe better to give that break. Or oh, maybe let's do that. I think Let's replace, put Nam in the rear jack for now. And then we can start looking at replacing some of these, like uh, Reissinen, for instance, can come in for Artanen, because Artanen's got very, very uh, high mistake uh, chance percentage there. Um, no one can really go into that front jack, can they? That's a bit of a concern for me. We could put Ankuri up there. Let's put Ankuri up in taste of Lindman. Give Lindman a break. And for tyres, I say... Perskinen, I think. He's got very, very poor fixing. Hopefully we don't have any front wing damage or anything like that. That's the risk that we're going to have to take. Um, and we may have to start signing up some of these guys. So I may sort of cut this out because it could be a bit of time. Let's see how long it takes. Oh, no, it doesn't. It'll be quite easy to renew. So we can do that. We can quickly do that for that one as well. Lindman, one race. Yep. Um, we really want to renew all of these guys because we don't want to run that risk of suddenly we're coming to the, the race after Singapore, which is Munich, and not having any uh, pit crew. So let's just sort of renew all of them, to be honest. I'm not too concerned. Nam, we've only just signed, so we don't need to do that with her. Um, anyone else fixing? Like, See, like this one, Curtio. I think we sort of get rid of her, or him, him, there you go, him. We get rid of him just because he's only really good at fixing, um, and everything else is pretty shit. So we can sort of let let him go. Um, other than that, I think we've done everyone, haven't we, now? Um, Pornstrom, one race. Do we keep him rear jack fixing? Yeah, we might as well. Might as well keep him as well. And um, that pretty much is it now. We've got a couple that are quite high, which is the... What's that one? we got Ran Hell, which is the rear right, and Kiyama. So the both right side is, is uh, both right side tire changes are, are a little bit um, fatigued. They're, the chances of stuffing up are quite high. So we may look at changing them, possibly. But there's no one that's really in place to, to improve things there. So we may just have to, to leave them for now. Um, and we might have to sort of shuffle things around a little bit. 
that way. Yeah, look, I can't really change anything there, so we will just leave that, um, and we'll just carry on plowing through. We, of course, we've got this contract proposal with uh, Daniel Nadge, which will be quite interesting. Hopefully, he's happy, and he is. Way solid. We've just signed another driver. I'm going to pick him up, and what we're going to do is we are going to sign Daniel Nadge, and we're going to replace Fuoco. So he's not going to be too happy. It's going to cost us a little bit of money, as you can see. About quarter, uh, half a million pounds. But this is what we're going to do. Joey Mawson, thanks for coming, buddy. You are now our reserve driver, whether you like it or not. And I'm not going to use him anymore. He's been really annoying me. Despite his great performance um, in the last race, as you can see, I mean, he finished fifth. And he has been improving every single race. Look, he's qualified 17, 16, 14. And his race, look, he's, he's shaved off half his positions every time. 20th, 10th, 5th. So he has been doing very well. But the fact that he's just the biggest whinger going, his morale is very, very low. I just think, let's get rid of him. We've got Daniel Nadj now as our um, number two driver. But he'll be on the left side just to completely confuse things I'm assuming um, but this is the big one this is what I really really like it's a permanent trait as well and everything gets bumped up by two during race conditions so you can expect to see him quite low down in qualifying but then during the race expect to see him coming through that field and that's really really promising and he's a much better driver in fact if we go compare and compare him to not Fuoco how do we change that clear selection and go Joey Mawson you can see look he's got him shame for breaking cornering got him all over smoothness has got him overtaking consistent he's not quite as consistent as Joey Mawson or as adaptable and his fitness is a bit lower as well but he gives slightly better feedback and he's a lot more focused as well which is really really good so I'll be interested to see him go but the fact that of course you've got to bump all these up by two during the race so the only one that um, Joey Mawson has him on is fitness because you bump that up to 11 it's still 13 11 so other than that Daniel Nadge is a much better driver he is on much better money as well but I don't really care about the money too much. Uh, that's always going to happen anyway. You're always going to find it a lot harder. And this is all the confirmation that we've just what we've just done. Um, Joey Mawson's thrilled that we uh, fulfilled that promise, and he gets a bit of extra morale. And now he's been demoted, and he's probably unhappy. And Daniel Nadge, there you go. He's got confirmation that he's now our number two driver. So we'll have a quick look at our uh, our park conditions. See how they're getting on. As they're doing quite well, aren't they? And I might just quickly. Uh, what I might do is I might actually switch that around the other way now. Um, yeah, I'll leave that as is now. And so we, we're really focusing on reliability. We want this reliability to climb right up. Um, we're not too concerned about that performance because that, that'll make a difference, but I'm, I'm not too fussed about it. Um, just purely because after the last race, doing the one-stopper, we were right up there anyway. I'm not expecting to win the race. So that's why I sort of figure, well, you know, a slight improvement in performance is great, but reliability is the big one. And we'll have a quick look at that now because we're about to go into Singapore and it's up to 82%. That's great. And we've bumped up the uh, performance up to 304 as well. Even better. I'm really, really chuffed about that. Um, so here is the upcoming uh, race for Singapore. Then the, the report on uh, Singapore. It's a 63-lap race. A 118.9 is the record. Sunday showing a 35% chance of rain, which is much higher than the 10% that we had before. Hopefully the uh, the weather station that we, we built at our factory makes a... a big help for us um dams are expected to dominate they've now got the best gearbox in the championship so expect to see them do well and the uh, tire compounds are super soft soft and the medium the track is quite abrasive but it, we our car is one of the best on the grid for tire wear so we should benefit quite well from that um otherwise look you know yeah build a staff center yeah daniel nadge has now got a new haircut so what does that give him it gives him slightly more marketability there you go fantastic stuff um and let's quickly skip through so it's track a we're racing you can just see a little a little um, line there where they can sort of cut that sort of whole section off and we could just be racing in track B but we are on track A today practice is expected to be heavy rain which will be bodes well because the race is going to be the same qualifying will be quite close because I don't think anyone's going to be able to set times on the uh, on the super softs so qualifying could be quite quite a close one um, what I will just do before I forget is I will change Charles Leclerc's um, gearbox he can have the best gearbox and Natch can have the one that's got slightly more reliability. Other than that, look, everything's pretty much the same. Leclerc's also got slightly better reliability on his brakes, but otherwise, look, we're all, all identical there. There's not really much going on. And they're both happy. Great stuff. Let's go to qualifying. 
Well, that was quite a surprising quali- a practice session because I was just about to say what a surprising qualifying session because I've just seen we've got thunderstorms here right now. Um, but the practice session was amazing. Uh, Charles Leclerc set the fastest lap on the soft tyres, which is the sort of medium compound, and uh, Daniel Nadge was in third place, about a tenth down on the same tyre. Surprisingly, the car that split us was Ralph Bichon of Campos Racing. What a weird practice session it was. The rain came down right towards the end. Um, and what actually happened was uh, uh, Rubens Barrichello, uh, he set time on intermediate tyres. He was very, very close. I think he was some 8th or ninth or something like that on the intermediate tyres. So he was very close time-wise on a much slower tyre during the heavy rain. Um, but Pascal Verline set a similar time to us. He was half a second down on soft tyres as well. So I don't know whether that means our two new drivers are now amazing or whether it was just such a bizarre session. But one of the good things is we managed to get a lot of knowledge. We managed to get our race trim, we managed to do intermediate tyres, and we managed to do soft tyres as well. Um, What I will have a quick look at, though, is this rain. Is this rain going to dissipate? It does look like it will. So what we're going to do is we are going to set the intermediate tyres. We'll have to do soft because there's nothing else uh, for both drivers. So softs and the intermediates. I don't really bother with qualifying. You may have noticed that. In terms of car setup, um, Daniel Nadge, we managed to get great. I couldn't really do anything else because I really wanted to get uh, knowledge up instead. Um, Charles Leclerc, though, we got excellent, excellent. And we got great for, for speed balance, which I'm not too disappointed with. But I think what we will do for qualifying is it's going to be a bit of a boring start to this session because it is absolutely tipping down with rain, so there's not really much point in doing anything. Look at how dark it's getting. This rain, it's going to stay for quite some time. You can see it is dissipating there uh, with about eight minutes to go. It starts to fall away. Um, so we may be able to go out then on intermediates and set a time. But I don't want to uh, leave it too late if I can avoid it, because this rain may come back. Remember before the race, there was no forecast for rain uh, during practice. It was just going to be cloudy. Um, so the fact that we're sitting here now in a torrential thunderstorm is, is a bit worrying, because if that rain comes back, we may have left it too late. But what I want to do is I want to send them out on... The, do I wait do I send them out on the intermediates with sort of six minutes left in the session or do I hold off and hope that this rain doesn't come back and then with sort of two minutes to go you can see there I can't hold on to it unfortunately but around there um, you know if the rain doesn't come back then the track might even start gripping up a little bit so then we can go out on the soft tires everyone going out on the wets they're gonna have to go out again I don't think it's worth it there's no point setting a time on the wets you can even see even if the rain comes back waiting a little while and then going out on the intermediates makes, makes much more sense so I think everyone's gambling here, going out on the wets. I don't think that's a good choice. We're going to wait it out. Um, and it doesn't look like the rain's coming back just yet. But maybe if I set a time on the intermediates, if we go out now, we're not going to have time to do another lap. So that's why I'm sort of thinking, let's just hold off a little while, keep an eye on that. It does look like the rain's going and away for good, though. So that's quite promising. But Ruben Barrichello is currently going around. Uh, Lorandi's just set the fastest first sector. But here comes Barrichello now, about to set the first lap of the session. There he goes now with a 120.9. That's awful timing because uh, Leclerc's time on the softs was a 118 dead, I think, a 1181, something like that. So the fact that uh, you know he's what two and a half seconds at least uh, behind. That's uh, that shows how heavy those uh, the, this rain has been, and the wets are just not that great, are they? But it does look like the rain is staying away. So we are going to only have one crack at this by the looks of things, because we're going to be leaving it and leaving it to the last second. Um, and I don't want to be uh, running that risk, because you might just see, you know, if the the graph starts going back up again for water on track, that could be a bit of an issue for us. Uh, but Barrichello is still the fastest man on track at the moment. Verline's gone around; he's gone fastest in the first sector, but he hasn't set the fastest second sector. He's about to cross the line now; he's over three tenths down, and he crosses the line, and he's down in twelfth place. But of course, because the track is drying up. That's why they they just came out too late, and he's going to be really, really pushing to come back out again and set another time. But as you can see, the rain is going away for good. So this is going to be fantastic for us. Everyone's going to be able to go out and set another time, but we're only going to be going out and setting the one lap. Going out on the wets, I just don't think was a great idea. It's just not worth it in that condition. And teams like, as you can see, like Verline, for instance, came out too late. Now the track's dried up, and his times were really, really hurt. As you've got a couple of guys there, like Jeff... Jeffrey's going out on the intermediates. That's a stupid decision by him. Where is he? There he is. He's gone through now. Surely he's going to be coming back in for Trident Racing. There's no way he's going to be sticking it out. And we've still got a little bit of time left. We've got 4 minutes 20. I'm going to leave them as long as I can. Um, anyone that's just going out now, can I see anyone that's going out? 
doesn't look like I can see anyone that's left the uh, track just yet. It looks like they're all coming in, unfortunately. So I can't really see too much. Now, who's that that's gone out? And Matsushita has gone out. So we'll have to keep an eye on him. What's he going out on? I can't even see him on the board. He's going out on the Super Soft, so he's doing it. And I think we're going to have to go out soon as well. So what I'll do is I'm going to send out Leclerc first. I'll send him out. Or do we send him out now? 3 minutes 30? Nah, let's, let's leave it a little while, shall we? Let's leave it just a little while. We want to be right at the death, just as that look. You can see the track gripping up right at the end there. That's what we want. And we want, with about 2 minutes 30 to go, I think we send them out then. As, uh, let's cut to Matsushita. Where is he? Because he's going to be setting the first lap on the... Uh, on the super softs so he's the one that we have to watch for and with about 220 to go a uh, 2 240 to go I think we send out Leclerc now let's see what he can do then we're gonna send him out on the super softs and we will send out Nadge right behind him it looks like that look Leclerc's already got lots of traffic everyone's trying to jostle for position aren't they in this right at the end of this session this is gonna be a really really tight one um, but let's have a look so a couple of guys so actually the Jorg I take it back Jorg is actually the one that's setting the first lap and as you can see he's um, split the fastest sectors with Montero there they right must be right behind one another um, this is gonna be really really exciting finish yorg has gone first uh, Take that back. Montero's now gone fastest. A 118 dead. So that's what we have to do to beat a 118 dead. And I'm sure some of these faster cars will beat that. They'll probably will probably drop into the 117s. Matsushita's has gone fastest in the first sector. Um, Leclerc, though, we're going to have to keep an eye on him because he's going to be coming up very close. He's got perfect and perfect for both his tyre and brake temperatures. Same with Nadge. This is going to be perfect. There's Leclerc there, you see. And he's got a bit of traffic in front of him. That looks like it could be Lorandi or Hubert. So we're going to have to keep an eye on them. But Nadge, what is he? Has he got any traffic behind him? No. Oh, it does have a little bit, but not too bad but let's watch Leclerc and we will have to watch Nadge down below this is remember his first race for us so this could be a really really exciting finish for him as Leclerc's got a little bit of traffic he's gone green in that first sector but he's two tenths up two and a half tenths he's about a quarter of a second up at the moment Latifi's gone fastest with a 117.6 Nadge has gone faster than Leclerc Leclerc's losing a bit of time now he's two two tenths down on the fastest time what can Nadge do has Nadge gone fastest in the first sector he could be setting pole here on his first race as Leclerc crosses the line and he's only down in 14th he's dropped down to 15th Stippler's now gone pole with a 117.2 and Nadge crosses the line second place that's why I signed this guy what a champion I am thrilled to bits with that second place Leclerc down in 16th something went wrong because he doesn't qualify that far down he will be bitterly disappointed with that finish I'm bitterly disappointed with that as well he's got a lot of work to do but Nadge up in second place he's got something to prove he's the new boy he needs to prove to to us to, to Leclerc that he can uh, survive with this team and that we made the right decision replacing Mawson with him and to be honest I don't think Leclerc would have got second so the fact that he's in second Leclerc has basically just done what Mawson did that's great stuff but Stipler for MP Motorsport remember at the start of the season I said that's who we were battling he just set pole wow I mean this is a really really tight championship isn't it so Stipler is on pole Daniel Nadge will be on the front row of the grid though he's just under two tenths uh, behind him then you got Hubert then you got Latifi the two racing engineering cars of Barrichello and Malia they're right down in fifth and sixth and then you've got teams like Sauber for instance Winkelhock and Verline they're in eighth and tenth what a fantastic bizarre qualifying this has been and the other campos racing driver nikita mazapin down in 19th place bashong up in 15th they're who we, we just don't want them to score points as long as they're not scoring points we're not going to get relegated so i'll see you tomorrow for the race and this is going to be a cool one so if you enjoyed that, guys, make sure you pop a big thumbs up on there for me if you did. And I'll see you tomorrow for the race where it's going to be pissing down with rain. I'm sure of it. <laughs>